Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the mobile game tutorial. We're still in the art phase and our last episode we pretty much got everything ready. So we got um, our 3D software ready. We created a really simple texture, which is this thing over here. And uh, we pretty much got, you know, the ball rolling. Now, what I'd like to do in this episode is actually create more of these um, floor prefabs. So we can actually, say, create a track. So make them all modular and we can simply copy and paste and create a path if we wish but uh, using only square ties like that, that ain't going to be really fun so I invite you to open up your 3D software once more and we are going to open up the 4x4 model so since we saved the, um, the 3ds max file directly inside of our asset folder you can go in artwork model and the 4 by 4 and simply double click on it which will open this in our 3D software alright and um, one thing I'd like to do before we go any further is I would like to reset this pivot so right now it is um, on the same axis as the grid which is usually good but I'd like to reset it for a single reason if you remember correctly in our game what we've did is we've did the UV up top so it looks like this so we have a 4x4 grid of our texture but beneath it we did a 2x2 two two. and if you want to go and just change the texture a little bit you can copy this move it here then rotate it around oops like so but if you notice since the pivot point is below the, the object itself then this is what you're gonna get, you're gonna get some kind of gap here so if we put the pivot point in the center that ain't going to happen anymore so that's what I'd like to do really quickly so that's our 4x4 object, I'm going to go in R key effect pivot only and then center to object save it once more so control S we go back in the game and here it is now we have to redo the box collider so go ahead and remove the box collider and reapply it Oh, not a 2D box collider, a 3D one. And then hit apply and we are now good to go. Right, I'll reset this, put this at minus 0 0.5. And then hit apply. So now if we go ahead and just copy this by hitting Control C, Control V on the keyboard, then we move it here. We want the other texture, we can simply flip it like that. And we get this. Now we could also work on our UV a little bit because this is not uh, this is not really good looking but it, it's really hard to see when you're coming fast and you're actually playing this game. Right, so I'll just leave it like that for now and if we go back I'd actually like to create more of these floor prefabs but we're gonna use this one as a base. So what we're gonna do and make sure you do this because uh, if you don't you're gonna override this object and that's not what we want. So just go ahead and um, in the save as you're going to save this object as and let's do another one so maybe just a uh, not a 90 degree turn but we'll just do a curved curved tile something of the sort I'm not quite sure about the name to be honest but now we made sure that we saved it under another name and another file so this is now a brand new entity. So let's go ahead and change its name for Curve Tiled. And what I'm going to do is I am going to select every single edge. So these edge. Like this. And do a loop. Oh, never mind, not a loop, a ring. Which will select all of these one. Now I will hit Connect, which will create another segment in between of those. So now we have more vertices we can play around with. And with that in mind, I will go ahead and add a FFD 4x4x4 modifier, just like this. Now this modifier is going to help you deform your object using these control points. So if you were to just pick some here, as you can tell, we get that kind of result. Now this is really a really cool modifier actually, so as you can tell, this doesn't look really great, so you wanted to make a jump or some kind of bad... Uh, this ain't really gonna cut it. Because we don't have enough vertices, uh, not vertices, but edges on this side. We only have four, as you can tell, so that's one up here, two, three, and four. However, on this side, 
we actually incremented the amount that we have. So if you go here, as you can see, this is way more smooth and this is way more acceptable. Right. So what I'd like to do is I am going to use these control points in the middle and I'll just bump this up like this and maybe maybe use the uh, the values down here at the bottom of your screen. So I'll be moving that to 1 in Z and I'll, move, I'll be moving all of these to minus 1. I'll remove the grid by the way, it's kind of annoying. So if you want to remove the grid, hit G on the keyboard. So I'm taking all of these and I'm putting them on minus 1. Now let's go ahead and save this go back in our game and let's go ahead take this this curved tile drag and drop it somewhere in the scene then drag and drop it in your prefab folder so floor tiles there it is we need to apply the material so I'm gonna go in artwork tile green drag and drop this right on top of my new object and here it is that's our prefab now let's try to move it somewhere like here see what kind of result we get. I'm actually going to reset it at the origin before and like this I'm moving using a uh, control so it snaps so as you can see I got the perfect alignment now as for the height it's a little bit different so maybe something of the sort now if I come back on this side it should be aligned just fine. Okay, like this. Oops. Right. Good. Now, if I if we actually play this, um, we are going to miss out on the collider. So let's go back on our object, remove the animator while we're while we're here, and now. If we put a box collider, that's the result we're going to get. And obviously, that is not what we want. So, that kind of result is not, <laughs> it's not really cool. What we'll do instead is we will put a mesh collider. And that collider is going to um, pretty much snaps on the vertex and just match the exact same object as we see. And as you can tell, we now have our curved floor. What I'll do is I'll go and open and I'll open up the uh, I'll delete this, I'll open up the 4x4 four four and use this one to actually create a ramp so it's going to be fairly simple, let's put a FFD box on it again and simply elevate one of the side, now make sure the one that you elevate is the one pointing uh, towards the blue axis so in this case this side okay so I'll go ahead and take all of these, the first row because we're going on, we're going from uh, down here to up there. So I'm going to take the first row, take its current Z. Right now it's at 0 0.25, and I'll do plus 0 0.75 every time. So this one is at um, 8.75 right now. Same thing on this side. So 0 0.875 plus 0 0.75, that's 1.625. And finally, the last one would be 2.375. So that is a really simple ramp. Now we could smooth it just a little bit. So I'll just, I'll take these control point and scale them this way. Or no, actually that ain't gonna cut it. So I'm just going to put these a little bit more um, higher so let's do that's 1.8 and that is now 1.6 so it's a really slight uh, it's a really slight thing actually and you know what we could be adding some more edges so if you select your editable polygon without checking this little thing here you can actually work on the original object so I'll select all of these edges like so and do a ring now connect and let's check this out once more so it's kinda messed up um, let's remove that modifier 
and we're going to add a new FFD 4x4x4 four four four, and then choose these vertex and uh, what's the last number we got? So the last number we got was 2.375 let's put it here 2.375 and then we had oops 0 0.875 in here 0 0.875 And what was this this one? That was 1.625. There we go. So that's our ramp. Let's put it a little bit higher here and a little bit lower here. And this is actually going to help us in our game go from down there to up here. Right. Plus you can almost use it as a jump um, if you use a boost on that. Now make sure you do save as because we actually opened the 4x4 but we never did save as so if you do save this you're going to overwrite your uh, normal tile and you don't you, know, you don't want that. So let's do this is a ramp up and then if we go back in our game we should now have our ramp up. There it is and I'm not really being consistent with the name of the model so I'll just put capital letters in front of them like so. Now move this at the origin of the well. Use the control to snap this. And I put it at minus 0 0.5. So here it is. Right? Put the right material on top of it. And I will save this um, in my floor tiles prefab folder. Right. Okay. So there it is. Now let's go ahead and try to walk on this we're, we're gonna miss out on the uh, mesh collider again so take your ramp up remove the animator add a mesh collider hit apply now we can try this and with the physics it goes down on Macfee alright so we got a ramp up which is also uh, which can serve as a ramp down as well if you just rotate it this way and what we're going to do next is we are going to create some kind of way to go sideways because right now it only goes in one direction. That kind of sucks. So what we'll do is we are going to create using the uh, 4x4 again. So this guy. What we're going to do is we are going to go back inside of our ramp up, do a save as, and let's call this a uh, 90 turn or 90 turn yeah that, that would do the job so we turn by 90 degrees make sure you do save as you can also change the name okay now for the bend we're actually going to change the UV a little bit so I'm going to take this whole object do a unwrap UV on it open UV editor and now I'm going to select the faces but I'll select them inside of um, my, my viewport so I'm going to select all of these four then do unwrap mapping I mean flatten mapping here it is and I am going to take all the vertices vertices and actually fill them just like this so we get one big circle and put them at 1 and V so this is the kind of result we want to get um, and that is because when we're going to bend this object um, if we left it with four texture like that, with four of these, it would look really, really bad. So I invite you to add the bend modifier to your object. We're gonna bend on the Y axis and also bend by uh, not 90, minus 90. And that's a that's the result we get. So basically, this is what we're gonna be using in our game. All right. So now back in 3ds Max, we are going to collapse these changes. So convert this to a editable polygon go inside the utilities tab and we are going to hit reset X form reset selected and then again convert this to editable polygon good now if we look at our pivot point we have to change it as well so this guy up here what we'll do with it is we are going to rotate the Y axis upward and the Z axis forward like this 
So make sure that the y-axis is actually pointing towards somewhere. All right, so let's save this, go back in our game, and let's look at the result. Here it is, this is a 90 turn. Let's put it at 0, 0, 0. Move it up here, minus 0 0.5. And if we try to match this, like so, we put the right color on it, so the tile green. And we also remove the animator and add a mesh collider. Now that everything is done, let's make sure we save it by drag and dropping this inside the floor tile prefab. Like so. And we should actually get some kind of turning tile, so that's a good thing. Alright, so right now we pretty much have enough um, tiles to just go ahead and create a level if you wish. And that's something you might want to be doing right now so you know if it's either fun or not or if you need to create more of these tiles so you can navigate through your level freely. Alright, so that being said, I'm actually going to end this video now and we're going to look at creating some kind of jump pad so we can find our mechanics back. So you know all the mechanics we had before that where we had the little jump um, and also the railings. We are going to add this back in the next episode, guys. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any question or comment, you can leave them in the comment section below. If you want to share with everybody the models you made or maybe like screen cap of what you use as reference or maybe even screen cap of your own thing that you like. So you're not actually giving the texture or the model, but just small screenshot uh, of your game that you're proud of. That actually also really helps people around because reference are great. You can do all of that on the Facebook page. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. I really appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next episode.